What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on the live stream on this beautiful, uh, it is a Tuesday, right? Tuesday night, August 23rd, uh, 2022 is the date. It is about 9.05 uh, p.m. here along the West Coast. Latest quake shows a 3.9 earthquake on the globe right around the Greece area. As noted right here on the EMSC model, 3.9 around Crete, Greece, just coming in a short time ago. Uh, looking at the rest of the USGS map here, 4.0 and above. Still seeing some activity around the Fiji Islands area and also up around the Java Trench. It looks like another aftershock has popped up in there uh, following that large 6.2 this morning. So still kind of keeping an eye on this area. The Java Trench does get some pretty large mega quakes out there. And uh, it's been a little while since we've had a pretty large mega quake in the region. We don't want to see another one, obviously. But, hey, it's plate tectonics. And there's always going to be some uh, buildup of stress in that region. And eventually another mega quake. Uh, one earthquake out here south of the uh, Vietnam area. 4.8, that one coming in. Uh, looks like late last night. As uh, far as recent activity goes here into the the uh, area, let's get rid of Hawaii real quick and see if we can spot out some recent movement. Looks like just like the 4.7 here, um, the aftershock sequence there in the Indonesia area of, of the Java Trench is about the latest. Had a little gap of lack of activity here as um, far as recent activity goes. So things are kind of at a standstill temporarily around this area of the plates. But uh, either way, I still think we're uh, definitely need to be watching a couple certain areas here considering all the deeper movement south of the Fiji Islands area earlier today. Of course, remember, uh, strain does build up here at the surface levels into these subduction zones once we see those deeper earthquakes taking place. South America, not a whole lot going on here. Uh, of course, down south, we did see a little bit of activity. Uh, let's see. That was from uh, most of that was from this morning and this early this afternoon time frame of 5.8 in the Balony Islands area. Um, but aside from that, no newer movement kicking off down here. And as you can see, South America not a peep or a squeak coming from the USGS in regards to earthquake activity out there. Uh, the EMSC model, of course. Uh, uh, stand by for a second here. What I do with the EMSC model? Here we go. Um, definitely will have uh, a swarm of activity noted on it. It's almost always happening. Let's go ahead and pull up this map here real quick. Um, Got to zoom in a little bit so we can see some of these smaller quakes here in the South America region. And there's a there's a handful of them, not a significant amount. Uh, not like we're seeing up north into the uh, Middle America Trench area. But these areas, it's almost like the West Coast. They always get earthquake activity. Uh, speaking of the West Coast up here, Pretty quiet across the western portion of the states, as far as 2.5 and above goes, the all magnitudes model. Kind of brings up a little bit more of the seismic activity out here. Uh, not super quiet. We definitely see a lot of microquakes throughout the region. Western Nevada showing a bunch, uh, basically from about Las Vegas northward through Tonopah up around uh, the uh, Reno area and north of there even around Pyramid Lake. These are just small microquakes, but still kind of shows the uh, general increase in seismic activity inland, well away from the, uh, the plate boundary itself. Not a whole lot going on around the Bay Area or the San Andreas Fault itself. We got a little bit of movement around the creeping section and also down south here on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. But uh, things just kind of, I don't know, no major quakes to report, no major unusual activity uh, to take note of. In the Yellowstone area, that thing was kicking up a little bit. Let me double check the uh, recent activity here. Of course, we had a little bit of swar uh, swarming this morning and also afternoon time frame. It looks like it's died off a little bit, although not completely. Still seeing some uh, microquakes here on the map. Mostly confined here to the northwestern corner of Yellowstone National Park and also out here around the Hebgen Lake area. So, um, Again, these swarms kind of come and go, and the USGS actually did a pretty good job of listing um, a good portion of them today up there on the map. Again, Hebgen Lake and a little bit of separate swarming over here around the uh, Maple Creek area. 
All right, um, let's go back here to the, I'm not for sure what happened to my other USGS map. What's up here? So northern, what do we got up here into the Pacific Northwest? Typical movement uh, around this area uh, and also out here around the Cascades. We're not seeing any suspicious activity. Uh, I do want to check out the trimmer map tonight and that uh, might give us a, an idea of what's going on. Most of it's at the south here, at the southern end of the Cascadia, 100. 26 epicenters so we're kind of noticing a little increase and this has been ongoing for uh oh about a week or so now most of the activity confined here to the southern portion of the cascadia and um i just really haven't noted too much in terms of earthquake activity though uh, into this region things just been kind of quiet here a lot of times when we see the tremor map activity light up we see uh now some earthquake activity ramping up here because of the pressure increase uh, due to the shoving down of that plate underneath one another. But uh, yeah, nothing showing up right now. Puerto Rico, uh, the majority of this from earlier, it looks like. Had a 2.1 a little bit ago, but uh, that's kind of right there in the mix of things. Big Island of Hawaii, got one earthquake up here outside of Mauna Kea, 3.0 at 24 kilometers. Occasionally we do see some earthquakes up there and it uh, looks like one of those popped up there today. Uh, most of the uh, movement around the Pahala region on the southeastern flank area. Far as the Tau Volcano, American Samoa, let's go ahead and check this out here real quick and we'll uh, see what we got. Any updated information being put out and whatnot. Uh, looks like the latest update here was put out today from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory on the Tau Island, Tau Volcano, American Samoa area. There's been no significant change to the earthquake activity beneath or around uh, the island since yesterday's update. USG, uh, USGS staff have identified sites um, on Tau Island for advanced seismic stations and are beginning installation today. Uh, when was this, 22? This kind of looks like it was put out uh, yesterday late. The uh, thing is, they're way ahead in time uh, compared to California and, they, and the, the rest of the states here. But they are uh, they put out these late updates, but that was from yesterday. So we'll see if we put another one, see if they put another one out tonight. Uh, looks like just, yeah, twos and threes kicking up on the board. Let's go ahead and see what we got for any type of data coming in. I still think they're using the Raspberry Shake data. Uh, until they get the uh, official ones in which would probably be a lot better looking and I might even be able to key those up on the on the live stream itself here so not for sure what's going on with the readings uh, or at least with the graphs I know we're still seeing some earthquakes here some little bitty ones uh, let me see if I can bring up the size of these things here a little bit not for sure why it started off like that. I'm guessing it's because of this earthquake here. Uh, maybe this one and this other one kind of flatlined everything. So it started off uh, with a smaller setting uh, f far as the uh, amplification goes. So like this, now we can actually see a little bit more of the smaller quakes. And you can go up even more on the amplification settings and see uh, the much smaller ones. But yeah, when we get these bigger ones like that, they kind of flatline everything, but uh, yeah, those look like they're up there. That could be even a three magnitude earthquake there at the Tau Volcano. And looking at the general seismic activity, it looks obviously it looks about the same as it has been for the last couple of weeks or so with the ongoing earthquake swarm. Uh, no major changes noted, but uh, we start seeing these earthquakes get bigger each day, then might want to be watching out. Space weather activity. I don't know if you guys seen this picture yet, but look at this. Look at the coronal hole 17 here with a giant sunspot in it. Not too often do you see that type of setup, uh, but they do happen on occasion. This one's kind of neat looking. Um, we'll have to watch it pretty closely and see if this sunspot develops rapidly and uh, starts shooting off flares or who knows what. But... Uh, yeah, there's a pretty large coronal hole. We got 18 facing us, but that's just a little bitty one. So uh, we'll watch this and see what becomes of it. Uh, it is named 3086, and there's a little bit of complex uh, magnetic fields here, very close together. 
uh, in a couple different spots. Uh, not for sure which class it is. Let me see what we got for the class. Uh, as far as the magnetic class goes, 3086 right here. Uh, it does harbor just right now a beta, a beta class magnetic field. And they're only putting a 20% chance for a C flare on this one, but it's growing pretty rapidly out there. Um, 3085 as well. Looks like 3087 getting in on the mix as well. The newest named sunspot. So things kind of pick it up once again. They, we go through these little dull stages and things just, uh, they come and go here on the sun. But we are entering into the solar maximum here in a couple years. So it's going to be crazy to see what the sun is capable of doing uh, with already being ahead of schedule as far as the number of sunspots go. But uh, yeah, this is kind of neat to look at. And you can see it on a couple different graphs here. Um, there's the sunspot, the coronal holes, kind of the darker levels. Now that's a bad, uh, that's a basically some high wind stream coming from the sun. Uh, basically it's a magnetic, the magnetic field lines of the coronal hole basically stream out of the sun to a connection point uh, somewhere in the interplanetary space rather than to a magnetic reconnection point near the sun's surface, similar to what you would see on, or uh, what compared to what you would see with a sunspot these are way different in the magnetic field department but it's pretty neat to look at these sunspots right in the middle of a coronal hole that's uh again i we don't see it too often look at that coronal hole with a pretty good sunspot in it we'll see what happens maybe this thing could turn into a a double whammy for earth we'll see what plays out nobody's really saying anything about it yet um, here on the space weather side of things. I think I might be just, I don't know, maybe somebody beat me to it on YouTube, but it's definitely a, a pretty cool looking feature and I will be watching it, monitoring it um, as the hours and days progress. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that was from yesterday, that announcement. Current wind speed and whatnot is uh, pretty low, low key right here, down below the 500 range. Uh, down below the 450, actually, it looks like. Uh, things pretty stable across the density and the interplanetary magnetic field. Looks pretty stable there, far as the BTBZ component. But uh, that's all subject to change, right? And that could change in the blink of an eye. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. I still got a little bit of schoolwork to do. Got to finish that up before I, uh, before I call it a night and um yeah have a good day folks have a good night we'll chat you guys sometime tomorrow and um again waiting on my fan my cooling fan i had one burn up actually I had two burn up on me here over the last couple days and just running about a fraction of my gpu right now on the computer um i don't want to cook anything so it's, it's i'm running a, a separate fan an external fan just to cool the gpu down right now um, but that's kind of why we're running in 1080 at uh, 60 frames a second instead of the typical 4K 60 FPS. So we will get back into that once we get uh, the fan kicked up and um, installed and whatnot, which would probably be here in a couple days. Look at the West Coast. Where's all the activity on the West Coast? What's going on here? Pretty quiet, huh? Um, somebody kind of asked me about that. What's going on with all the quietness? Um, and with this inland activity in Nevada, I'm really surprised we're not seeing some of those microquakes. We would have to bring it down into the upper one range to see that. And I don't like having, I really don't like having a clutter on the globe because then you get, I mean, look at it. It kind of covers up some important areas when it comes to the little bit larger magnitude. So I like to keep it roughly about, we could do 2.0 and above. See if we can include that in there, right about there. That'll show some of the activity without completely covering up all the uh, important earthquakes out there. But uh, yeah, it's just West Coast is super duper quiet. I'm not for sure exactly why. Um, but with this inland movement kicking up here in Nevada, the, a lot of those microquakes. That could just be a sign that things are kind of pretty much stalled out here along the plate boundary, but still increasing in pressure uh, well inland away from the plate area. So we'll, we'll definitely watch it and see how it plays out, folks. So, All right, have a good night, guys. Um, and we will chat at you a little bit later on. Welcome to the new members out there on the channel. We will give a shout-out to those folks. Uh, we normally try and do it Friday night. 
or so uh, for the new members out there or might even do it tomorrow. We'll see. All right, guys. Take care. We'll catch you a little bit later on. Peace out.